In this video, I'm going to do the Paper 3 calculator, higher tier, from June 2018. Question 1. We've got a scatter diagram showing information about 12 girls. It shows the age of each girl and the best time she ran the 100 metres. So you can see here we've got the scatter diagram. Question 1a, write down the type of correlation. So we can see it's going down as the age goes up, the time goes down. So it's called a negative correlation. So negative. Part B, Christina is 11 years old. Her best time to run 100 meters is 12 seconds. The point representing this information would be an outlier, explain why. So if she's 11 years old, it takes her 12 seconds. So 11 years old and 12 seconds, that would be here. So why is that an outlier? So if we draw the line of best fit, the trend line, it would look something like that. And you can see that this point's a long way away from the line of best fit. So Christina is a lot faster than other people her age. So it's a long way away from the line of best fit. It doesn't fit the trend. So it's an outlier. Debbie is 15 years old, and Debbie says the scatter diagram sh shows I should take less than 12 seconds to run 100 meters. Comment on what Debbie says. So Debbie's 15, and she's saying it will take her less than 12 seconds. So she's saying she'll be down here. So what she's done is she's extended the line. Uh, she's extrapolated. You shouldn't do that, it's unreliable. So there's no information on 15 year olds. So we don't know that the trend continues. What we can put is, we have no information about 15 year olds. So we can't make a reliable prediction. So we can only make predictions within our range of data. So within the points that we've been given, you can't make predictions outside of that range. Question two. Expand and simplify. So it's times, 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 times. Five times P is 5P. Five times three is 15. Negative two times one is negative two. And negative two times negative two P. A negative times a negative is a positive. And two times two P is four P. Then we simplify by adding the things that are the same. 5p plus 4p is 9p, and 15 take away 2, that's 13. Question 3. Here is a trapezium drawn on a centimetre grid. On the grid, draw a triangle equal in area to this trapezium. So we need to know the area of the trapezium and then we can draw a triangle with the same area. So along the base it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Along the top it's two and it is four tall. So area of a trapezium 
either split it into triangles or do half the sum of the parallel sides. So half of 2 plus 7 times the height times 4. So we've got a calculator. We can use it for this. So that gives us 18 centimetres squared. So the area of the trapezium is 18 centimetres squared. So we need to draw a triangle with an area of 18 centimetres squared. So the area of a triangle is the base times the height divided by 2, or half base times height. That's the area of the triangle, and it's got to equal 18. So if I double both sides, that means the base times the height must be 36. So what numbers can I multiply together to get 36? I could do 1 and 36, but that's not going to fit on the grid. Same with 2 and 18 or 3 and 12, but I can do 4 by 9 or 6 by 6. So I can draw a triangle with a base of either 4, 9 or 6. Um, I'll do 6 by 6, so it's going to have a base of 6 and a height of 6. It doesn't matter if you do a right angle triangle or do an isosceles triangle or a scalene triangle. It doesn't make a difference as long as it's got a base of 6 and a height of 6 or 4 and 9. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 along the base. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 as the height. Question 4. When a bias six-sided dice is thrown once, the probability it will land on six, no, land on four, is 0 0.65. So the probability of land on four is 0 0.65. And so not land on four must be 0 0.35. Because the two probabilities have to add up to one whole. So Emil has drawn the tree diagram and he's made mistakes. Where are they? So they're not land on four on the first throw. He's got wrong. He's put 0 0.25. It should be 0 0.35. And for the second throw, he has put his probabilities the wrong way round. He should have had 0 0.65 as land on 4 and 0 0.35 not land on 4. So write down two things wrong with the probability tree diagram. So for the first row, not land on 4 should be 0 0.35, not 0 0.25. And the top one on the second row, so second throw top, the probabilities are the wrong way around. Question 5. ABC is a right angle triangle. ABC, so here's si um, angle ABC. Work out the size of angle ABC. Give your answer to one decimal place. So we've got a soccer toe question. We've got the hypotenuse is the longest side. O is opposite the angle. And adjacent is in between the angle and the right angle. 
So in this question, we've got A, which is 7. We've got H, which is 11. We don't have O. So it's not SO. It is CA. And it's not TA. So we've got COS with the angle COS X equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So COS X equals 7 over 11. And to get COS away from X, we arc COS, shift COS. So COS with the minus 1, 7 over 11. Type it into the calculator. And we get 50.4788 and so on to one decimal place. 50.5 degrees. The length of side AB is reduced by one centimeter. The length of BC is still seven and angle ACB is still 90. So AB was 11. It's now going to be 10. So we've got 10 here, there's our angle, 7 and a right angle. So has cos ABC increased or decreased? So cos ABC, cos X, all right, cos X was 7 over 11, but we've changed the length of the hypotenuse. So remember cos x is a over h this is the hypotenuse this is the adjacent so it's now seven tenths so cos abc was seven elevenths it's now seven tenths so has it increased or has it decreased so seven tenths is bigger it's a bigger number than seven elevenths so cos x or cos abc has increased it's gone up from 7 elevenths to 7 tenths there are some counters in a bag the counters are red or white or blue or yellow bob is going to take at random a counter from the bag and we've got a table showing us the probabilities that the counter will be blue or yellow we don't know red yet or white there are 18 blue counters in the bag so it's 18 blue and the probability we take red is twice the probability of white so if white is x red is 2x work out the number of red counters in the bag we can either start by working out the x's or start by working out how many counters there are let's do the counters first so 0 0.45 times the total number of counters equals 18 so the probability of blue is 0 0.45 so 0 0.45 times the total counters is 18 counters so if i want to find the number of counters i do 18 divide 0 0.45 so that makes 40 counters in total so the total number of counters is 40 I can work out how many yellow there are. So I'm going to do 0 0.25 times 40. 0 0.25 times 40 is 10 counters. So there's 10 yellow. So how many have I got left? I've got 18 and I've got 10. Which is 28. So 40 take away 28 means there's 12 left and they have to be the red or white.
And if there's double, I should have. If there's double the number of red, there are white. So we've got three X's equals 12 divided by three, which is four. So there are four white counters. There's double that red, which is eight. So there are eight red counters. A marble is going to be taken at random from a box of marbles. The probability that it's silver is 0 0.5. There must be an even number of marbles in the box. Explain why. To find the number of silver, you're going to take the total. So silver marbles. But silver M is total M divided by 2. So half of the marbles are silver. And if you had an odd number of total marbles and you divided it by two, you wouldn't get a whole number. And you need there to be a whole number of marbles. So odd divided by two is not an integer, not a whole number. And we need there to be a whole number of marbles. We cannot have half a marble. Question seven. Solve five minus x all over two equals two x minus seven. The first thing we want to do is get rid of this fraction and we're gonna get rid of a divide by two by multiplying by two. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So if I times 2x minus 7 by 2, 2 times 2x is 4x, and 2 times a negative 7 is negative 14. Now I'm going to get rid of the smallest x first, and I've got 4 on the right, I've got a negative 1 on the left, negative 1 is smaller, and I'm going to get rid of my minus 1x by adding 1x. So I'm going to add an x to both sides. 4x plus 1x is 5x. So now I want to get x by itself. I'm going to get rid of the minus 14. The opposite of minus 14 is plus 14. So I'm going to plus 14 to both sides. Which gives me 19 equals 5x. So I've got 5 times x. To get rid of the times, I do, I'm going to divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by 5. So x is 19 over 5. I could leave it like that, or I could change it to 3.8. A, B, C, D, E is a pentagon, question 8 says. So I've got a five-sided shape, and we've got three angles given to us. Angle BCD is two times ABC. So ABC, if ABC is X, BCD is going to be twice that, so 2X. Work out the size of angle BCD. Okay, so what do angles in a pentagon add up to? So it's a five-sided shape. Angles in a five-sided shape. So you, what you can do is you can say it makes three triangles. So it's 180 times three. Three times 180 is 540. So the angles in a pentagon add up to 540. So all of these angles equal 540. So we've got a 90 degree here, plus 115, plus 125, plus x, plus 2x equals 540. 
So now we just need to solve this equation. And actually, we need to find 2x. So solve the equation and then double the answer. So 90 plus 115 plus 125. That's 330. And x plus 2x is 3x. So we want to get x by itself. We're going to take 330 off of both sides, which leaves me with 210. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 3 to get x by itself. And that gives me x is 70. So angle A, B, C is 70. B, C, D is twice that. So it must be 140. Question 9. T equals the square root of W over D cubed. And we've been given what W is and we've been given what D is. So it's just substituting these numbers in to the formula we've been given. So it's 5.6 times 10 to the power of minus 5 over... 1.4 times 10 to the power of minus 4 cubed. So we're just going to type this into the calculator. Square root button first, then the fraction button. 5.6 times 10 to the power of minus 5 over open bracket 1.4 times 10 to the power of minus 4 cubed. So it says give your answer in standard form. That's not what the calculator's done. So it's given me 4, 5, 1, 7, 5, and so on. To three significant figures, that's 4, 5, 20. And in standard form, it's 4.52 times 10 to the power of 1, 2, 3. So standard form is a number between 1 and 10, which is 4.52 times 10 to the power of how many times do I times by 10? 1, 2, 3 in this case. W is increased by 10%. D is increased by 5%. Lottie says the value of T will increase because W and D are increased. Lottie is wrong, explain why. So, well, we're increasing the numerator and the denominator. So we're going to be increasing the top and increasing the bottom. If the increase of the denominator is more than the increase of the numerator, then our number is actually going to get smaller. So D is increased by 5%. But D is actually cubed as well. Let's just work out the new value. So to increase by 10%, I'm going to times by 1.1. That adds on 10%. And to increase by 5%, I'm going to times by 1.05. So I'm just going to change these numbers. So the new T is the square root of... 5.6 times 10 to the power of minus 5 times 1.1 over 1.4 times 10 to the power of minus 4 times 1.05 cubed, because D is cubed. So if you've kept your previous calculation, you can just amend it by clicking back into the calculator. So I've got my new answer as 4, 4, 0, I'll put 0 to 3 significant figures, 
So I've rounded it to three significant figures, 4400, zero, zero, and it's gone down. So 4400 zero, zero is less than 4520. So Lottie is wrong. And the reason is the numerator increased to so the top number increased by less than the denominator. Question 10. Here are three lamps, lamp A, lamp B and lamp C. Lamp A flashes every 20 seconds, lamp B is every 45 seconds, lamp C is every 120 seconds. The three lamps start flashing at the same time. How many times in one hour do they flash at the same time? So how many times in an hour do they flash at the same time? What's the lowest common multiple of these numbers? So I could write out the 20 times table, but 20 is a factor of 120, so I don't really need to do that. So the 45 times table, of course we can use the calculator for this. And so on. And lamp C is the 120 times table. So they both flash every 360 seconds. And of course, 20 will also be flashing at 360 seconds. So they all flash every 360 seconds. If I divide that by 60, that's 6, so it's every 6 minutes. And in an hour there are 60 minutes, so 60 divided by 6, so 10 times an hour. Question 11. In 2003, Jerry bought a, bought a house. In 2007, he sold it to Mia and made a profit of 20%. In 2012, Mia sold the house for 162000 and she made a loss of 10%. How much did Jerry pay for the house in 2003? So, we Jerry started, and we'll call that X. So, the original price of the house is X in 2003. Jerry sold it to Mia and made a profit of 20%. So, the value of the house times 1.2 is what we're up to now. And then Mia sold it for 162000 making a loss of 10%. So take off 10% is times by 0 0.9. And now it equals 162,000. So the original price added on 20%, took off 10% is now 162,000. So we're going to need to divide by 0 0.9, divide by 1.2, or divide by these two times together. Either way around, so 162,000 divided by 1.2 times 0 0.9. Type it into the calculator, and that gives us 150,000. So if we want to check our answer, we can add 20% onto this number, then take 10% off the new number, and see if we get to 162,000, which we should do. A 
Okay, question 12. The graph shows the volume of liquid L litres in a container at time T seconds. Find the gradient. So the gradient is for every one it goes across. How much does it go up or down? That's quite difficult to do with one. So we'll, we'll do it a longer one. We'll go along four. So if we go along four, we go up from four to 10, up six. So we're long four up six. So the gradient, the change in the y, six, divided by the change in the x, four, six over four is 1.5. So the gradient is 1.5. For every one we go across, we go up 1.5. So we go across four, we go up six. Explain what the gradient represents. So it's the rate of change of the volume. So for every one second, how much the volume increases by. So rate of change. So either of these answers are fine. Rate of change in volume or for every second, volume increases by 1.5 litres. The graph intersects the volume axis at L equals 4 explain what this represents. So what does this mean? So at the beginning, when time was zero, so at the beginning of this experiment or whatever it is, the there was four liters in the container. So the volume was four liters the start of whatever we're measuring. Question 13. Here are two similar solid shapes. The ratio of surface area to shape A to surface area of shape B is 3 to 4. So surface area is the scale factor for surface area is scale factor squared. So for scale factor for lengths, the ratio is going to be the square root of this. So square root 3, so scale factor for lengths is square root 3 to square root 4. For Area is this squared, which we already know. And for volume, it's this cubed. So root 3 cubed is 3 root 3. And root 4 cubed is, well, 8. Root 4 is 2. So our scale factor for lengths the ratio is root 3 to 2, and for volume, it's 3 root 3 to 8. So the volume of shape B is 10. So if this one is 10, what is the volume of shape A? So what do you times 8 by to get to 10? So 10 over 8 is 1.25. So times 1.25 so I need to times 3 root 3 by 1.25. To three significant figures, I get 6 point, so I've got 6.495, so it's going to be 6.50. Question 14. There are 16 hockey teams in the league. Each team played two matches against each of the other teams. 
So we can say they played home and away. Work out the total number of matches played. So there are 16 teams in the league. So they're going to play the other 15 teams once at home and once away. So 16 teams and they need to play 15 home matches. So each of the 16 teams plays 15 matches at home. So 16 times 15 is 240. And all the away matches are already counted because we've counted them as the other team's home match. So 16 times 15 is 240. So each team plays 15 home games and that is all of the matches. In every match, someone is playing at home. So the answer is 240. Question 15. The graph shows the speed of a car in meters per second during the first 20 seconds of a journey. So we've got a speed time graph with a curve. Work out an estimate for the distance the car traveled in the first 20 seconds. And it says use four strips of equal width. So the distance traveled on a speed time graph is the area underneath the curve and we're being told to use four strips so we've got a strip here one at 10 one at 15 and up at 20 so we've got a triangle for zero to five and trapeziums for the other three strips. So we need to work out the area of these four shapes and add them together and that will be our distance. So we've got, do the triangle first. Area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. So that's five times 22 divided by 2, which is 55. And the area of a trapezium, so we add up the two parallel sides, divide them by 2, and times the distance between them. So it's 22 and 28. 22 plus 28 divided by 2 times the distance between them. So that's 125. Remember to use the calculator. And we've got 28 and 32. 28 plus 32 divided by 2 times 5, which is 150. And we've got 32 and 35. So 32 plus 35 divided by 2 times the distance between them. And that is 167.5. So we just need to add these up. So 55 plus 125 plus 150 plus 167.5. And that's our total area our total distance and it's 497.5 meters is your answer for part a an underestimate or an overestimate of the actual distance traveled so is the actual area under the graph more or less than our answer and you can see that there is some space in between. So the actual area, a tiny bit up here, the actual area is bigger. So we've underestimated. So we can say it's an underestimate our 
shapes do not include all of the space, all of the area under the curve. Question 16. The nth term of a sequence is given by a n squared plus b n, where a and b are integers. So it's a quadratic sequence. The second term is negative 2. The fourth term is 12. Find the sixth term. So because it's a quadratic sequence, it doesn't have the same difference every time. So we just we can't work out the difference and add it on. We don't know um, what it's going up in because in a quadratic sequence, it's the second difference that's the same, not the first difference. So we're going to have to work out what A and B are in order to work out the sixth term. So the second term, that's when N is 2. So I'm going to change N into 2. So I'm going to have A times 2 squared plus b times 2 equals negative 2 and I'm going to have for the fourth term n is 4 so it's going to be a times 4 squared plus b times 4 equals 12 so 2 squared is 4 so that's 4a plus b times 2 is 2b equals negative 2 and I'm going to simplify it so everything in this equation is in the 2 times table so I can divide everything by 2 so 2a plus b equals negative 1 okay I'm going to simplify the second one now so a times 4 squared 4 squared is 16, so that's 16a, plus b times 4, which is 4b, equals 12. And I'm going to divide this one through by 4. Everything's in a 4 times table. So I'm going to have 4a plus b equals 3. And now I've got two equations of two unknowns, so they're simultaneous equations. I'm going to have 4a plus b equals 3, and 2a plus b equals negative 1. So b is the same here, so I'm going to take them away, and that will eliminate the b's. So 4a take away 2a is 2a, b take away b is nothing, and 3 take away negative 1, a minus minus makes a plus, so 3 plus 1 is 4. 2 a's are 4. Divide both sides by 2. a must be 2. And I'm going to substitute my 2 back in to the second equation here. So I have 2 times 2. So changing a into 2. Plus b equals negative 1. So 4 plus b equals negative 1. Subtracting 4 from both sides, b is negative 5. So that means it was a n squared plus b n. So it's 2 n squared minus 5 n. So there's my equation. There's my nth term. It's my nth term for the sequence. And we want to know the sixth term. So the sixth term is when n is 6. So we've got 2 times 6 squared minus 5 times 6. Just type it into the calculator and it gives us our answer of 42. Here are the first five terms of a different quadratic sequence. 0, 2, 6, 12, 20. And we're going to find an expression in terms of n 
from the nth term of this sequence. To find the nth term of a quadratic sequence, we work out the first difference first. So it's plus 2, plus 4, plus 6, plus 8. And then the second difference, which is 2, 2, 2. So in a quadratic sequence, the second difference is always the same. So there are two different methods of working from here. I'm going to use the one with the equations. So I'm working out the nth term, which is going to be in the form an squared plus bn plus c. And I'm going to say that, so I've remembered this, this term is 2a. This term is 3a plus b. And this term is a plus b plus c. So I've remembered this, this is always the case. So it's 2a, 3a plus b, and a plus b plus c. So I'm going to start with my 2a is 2. So if 2a equals 2, that means a is 1. And then moving on to the second one, 3a plus b is 2. A is 1, remember, so 3 times 1 is 3. So 3 plus B is 2. Subtracting 3 from both sides, B is negative 1. And A plus B plus C is 0. A plus B plus C is 0. A is 1. B is minus 1. So that says, well, 0 plus C is 0. So C is 0. So that gives me, I've got 1n squared, so a is 1, 1n squared, so just n squared, plus bn, so minus n, and c is 0, so there's no c term. So the nth term is n squared minus n. Question 17. So we've got two triangles joined together here. So it's going to be the non-right angle triangles. So it's going to be the sine rule and the cosine rule. We need to work out the length of AD, which is this, and give our answer three significant figures. So we don't have enough information on this top triangle to work out AD first. So we're going to have to work out, so if we call this X, call the one in the middle y, we're going to have to work out the value of y, how long y is, to put into the second triangle. Is it the sine rule or the cosine rule? If it's the sine rule, we've got opposites, which we do. So y is opposite 34, 12.5 is opposite 109, so we can use the sine rule. And the sine rule is A over sine A equals B over sine B. I'm using the lengths on top because I'm working out a length. If I was working out an angle, I'd do sine A over A equals sine B over B. The length we're working out is Y. He's opposite 34, so it's Y over sine 34. And then the other length is B, which is 12.5. He's opposite 109, so it's over sine 109. To get Y by itself, I'm going to we'll get rid of a divide by sine 34. To get rid of divide by sine 34, I multiply by sine 34. So it's 12.5 over sine 109 times by the whole side times by sine 34. So I'm going to type it into the calculator exactly like that. So 12.5 over sine 109 as a fraction and then click across and times sine 34. So I've got my value for y as 7.39267 and so on.
that's why. So I can label that 7.39 dot dot dot. I'm going to keep the whole number in the calculator so I get a more accurate answer. And now I'm going to move on to the second triangle. So I've got x 86 my 7.39 which I've got in the calculator and 11.4 so this is a cosine rule question we've only got one angle in the question and we've got the lengths each side of the angle so it's a cosine rule question there's no opposites because there's only one angle so the cosine rule is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a and the big a big a is the angle cos goes with the big a the angle opposite big a is little a and the other two are b and c in whatever order you like so if we substitute into here we've got x squared equals 11.4 squared plus my 7.39 squared minus 2 times 11.4 times my 7.39 which I've got in the calculator cos 86 so I'm going to type this whole side into the calculator in one go and that will tell me what x squared is So I get 172.85 and so on and I'm going to square root that square root answer so x is to three significant figures 13.1 centimeters. Question 18. Show that x cubed plus x equals 7 has a solution between 1 and 2. So we're going to substitute in 1, substitute in 2, and we're going to show that 1 is each side of 7. So we can even leave it like this and show it's each side of 7 or subtract 7 and then show it's each side of zero. I'm going to subtract the seven. So x cubed plus x minus seven equals zero. So if I substitute in one, I've got one cubed plus one minus seven, which is negative five. If I substitute in two, I've got two cubed plus two, minus 7 which is 3 so we've got a change of sign one's bigger than 0 one's less than 0 so change of sign change of sign therefore solution between 1 and 0 so one's positive one's negative which means they're each side of zero, so there's a solution between one and zero. Show that the equation x cubed plus x equals seven can be rearranged to give x equals the cube root of seven minus x. So we're gonna rearrange this. So we're gonna subtract x from both sides. So I'll make it clear what I'm doing. Subtract x from both sides. And then I'm going to cube root both sides. So x is the cube root of 7 minus x. And part c. Starting with x0 is 2. So I'm going to start by substituting in 2. 
use the iteration formula three times to find an estimate for the solution. So x1 is going to be the cube root of 7 minus substituting in 2, because we're substituting in 2 into here to get our first answer. So it's the cube root of 7 minus 2 to start with. And that is 1.709975947. That's all the digits on my display. And then for x2, I'm going to do 7 minus answer. I'm going to change 2. The two I had here into A and S from my calculator, and it's going to take this number and substitute it in. So I'm just going to click equals on that, and that's 1.74241880. And for the third one, I'm going to click equals again, and that's 1.73884956. Question 19. Well, we've got two right angle triangles drawn for us. And it says, given that tan E equals tan F. So tan is opposite over adjacent. So tan E equals O over A. And of course, tan F will be O over A. So it's saying that the opposite over the adjacent in one triangle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent in the other triangle. So O over A for the first triangle equals O over A for the second triangle. So we're just going to solve now. So I'm going to get rid of my fractions. So to get rid of divide by 4x minus 1, I'm going to multiply both sides by 4x minus 1. And to get rid of 12x plus 31, it's divided at the moment as well. So I'm going to times both sides by 12x plus 31. So that will give me x times 12x plus 31 equals 6x plus 5 times 4x minus 1. So I've just got all these brackets to expand now. So x times 12x is 12x squared. 31 times x is 31x. 6x times 4x, 6 times 4 is 24. x times x is x squared. 6x times minus 1 is minus 6x. 5 times 4x is 20x. And 5 times minus 1 is minus 5. And so what have I got? I've got 12x squared plus 31x on the left. And I can simplify minus 6 plus 20. Minus 6x plus 20x is 14x. So I've got a quadratic I need to solve. To solve a quadratic, we make it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 12x squared from both sides which is going to give me well 12x squared 24x squared take away 12x squared is 12x squared and i'm going to subtract 31x from both sides 14 take away 31 is minus 17. so i've got 12x squared minus 17x and i've still got the minus 5. Okay, we've got a quadratic, so we can use the quadratic formula, or we could factorize. Let's give, let's give factorizing a go. I'm going to use one of the methods. So I'm going to do the a times c. So the 12 times the minus 5. a times c is minus 60. And I'm going to look what multiplies to give me a minus 60 and adds to give me a 17. So I can do 1 times 60. 
two thirties, three twenties, four fifteens, five twelves, six tens. It's not in the seven times table, it's not in the eight times table. And I think that's it. So how can I make a 17? Well, I've got two ways actually. We've got the three and 20 or the five and 12. How can I make a minus 17? So I need, they need to multiply to make a minus 60 and add to make a minus 17. It's going to be plus three take away 20 plus 3 take away 20 multiply to make minus 60 and add to make a minus 17 okay so there's different ways of doing it from this point i'm going to do the 12x in both brackets so 12x 12x over 12 and inside the brackets, I'm going to put my plus 3 and my minus 20. So I need to divide by 12. So I'm going to divide this one by 3. I can factorize 3 out of the first one and 4 out of the second one. So dividing the first one by 3, that's 4x plus 1. And dividing the second one by 4, 3x minus 5. So there we go, there's our factorized equation. I'm going to solve it now. So x equals what makes x 0? What's x got to be for the bracket to be 0 even? So that'd be minus 1 quarter, or x can be 5 thirds to make the second bracket 0. And I'm assuming, yep, one of the lengths is x, so I can't have a negative answer. So x must be, cannot have negative length. Therefore, x can only be 5 over 3. Question 20. 50 people were asked if they speak French or German or Spanish. 31 speak French, 2 speak French, German and Spanish. This is a Venn diagram. French, German, Spanish. There might be an outside, so I've had that as well and we'll fill in the information so 31 speak french so the whole french circle is going to be 31 two speak french german and spanish so two in the middle four speak french and spanish but not german so that's french and spanish but not german that goes there seven are german and spanish so all of the overlap of german and spanish is seven i've already got two in there so I need five more. Eight do not speak any. So they go on the outside. And all 10 people who speak German speak at least one other language. So there's no one in just German. And I've already got seven and there's 10 in total. So I want three more. 31 speak French, returning to that now. So I've already got six seven eight nine so 31 take away nine is 22 so we've got 22 in here and of course the one left is spanish we want 50 people in total so 50 take away all of these so take away eight take away 22 take away four take away two take away three take away five and that leaves me with six people so six people just speak Spanish and that should add up to 50 now. Two people are chosen at random. 
work out the probability they both only speak Spanish. So only Spanish is 6 out of 50. And so if I've asked one person, so the probability of getting the first one is 6 out of 50. I'm going to pick another person. So the first person's gone. So there's only five left that only speak Spanish. And it's now out of 49 because one has gone. So it's 6 out of 50 times 5 out of 49, which is, it's given me 3 over 245. That's what the calculator is giving me. So that's what I'll put as my answer. Question 21. A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. So I won't draw on it. A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. A, B, P and Q, C, D, so the top and the bottom, are straight lines. A, D, P, A, oh, yep. A, D, P and C, B, Q are right angles. It's all given to us on the diagram. Prove that ADP, triangle ADP, so this right angle triangle here is congruent, so the same as CBQ, the other right angle triangle here. What do we have? So we've got, well, we'll start with the right angle. So A, ADP, angle ADP equals angle CBQ, both 90 degrees, and that has been given to us. So we know that they're both 90 degrees. We have these lines BC and AD. So BC and AD, ABCD is a parallelogram. So BC and AD are equal because opposite lengths on a parallelogram are equal. AD equals BC because opposite lengths in a parallelogram are equal. So we've got AD and BC, we've got the two right angles. So what other information do we have? We have, well, these angles here are opposite angles in a parallelogram. So BAD, angle BAD equals angle BCD. I should have said. PAD really because that's in the triangle so angle PAD equals BCQ because opposite angles in a parallelogram are equal So what do, we, what do we have now? We've got an angle, a side, and an angle. And that's one of the rules for congruency. We can have side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, or right angle, a hypotenuse, and another side. So we've got angle, side, angle. We've proved an angle, a side, and angle are equal in both. So angle side angle a s a therefore triangle adp is congruent q 
to triangle CBQ. Part B. Explain why AQ is parallel to PC. So AQ, I'm going to clear this off. AQ, so AQ is this one. Is parallel, is it to PC? To PC. Okay, so why is that? Why is AQ parallel to PC? So we have just proved that these two right angle triangles here are equal, which means that this length, AP, must equal this length QC and if they're equal and parallel this shape must be a parallelogram and the opposite two lengths of a parallelogram are equal so we just proved because ADP is congruent to CBQ because ADP, triangle ADP, is congruent to triangle CBQ. Those lengths AP and QC, AP equals length AP equals length QC. So if AP and QC are equal and parallel, They are equal and parallel, which we were told in the question. Therefore, APQC or APCQ, APCQ is a parallelogram. And AQ and PC are opposite lengths in a parallelogram. And therefore, parallel. Opposite lengths in a parallelogram are parallel.